If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this AI takeover t-shirt design that I did. And I really like this concept. The layers for it are super chaotic, but luckily today we're going to be breaking them down step by step. So I'm gonna go through each layer and kind of explain my thought process behind the layer and hopefully give you guys a better understanding of why I do what I do and maybe it will help you in your design journey. If you guys enjoy the video, make sure you leave a comment and also smash that like button because it helps my channel grow, of course. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and stop talking and get right into the design process. We are in trusty old Photoshop here and um, God, what did I do with the circle in the background? I'm, I just butchered that. But anyway, this is the final design right here, the final concept that I came up with. And I did use my style bender template to come up with these like really detailed half tones. And if you don't have it, you should definitely have it. Honestly, it really does speed up the workflow. Um, people seem to be loving it and I'm going to be adding to it soon. I have a couple other styles that I want to include. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and go to the actual design where all the layers are and as you can see it's nothing fancy it's actually very desaturated low contrast and if i turn on these highlight bloom layer uh layers i should say you can see that this uh this magic happens let me put the mic by my mouth more there we go <laughs> uh anyway you can see like kind of a lot happens with the highlights if we zoom in on the forehead here or whatever the hell that is um you can see that the highlights bloom quite a bit, and that's simply because I added those highlights manually. And if I turn on the top layer too, you'll see with the color adjustments, we add more contrast, rich colors, and all that good stuff. So anyway, we're gonna break it down from the ground up though. So let's go ahead and hide these top layers, bam. And let's go to the layers, and I'm gonna toggle everything off. This is the fun part. All right, so let's turn the bottom layer on, and this is literally, the first layer let's turn the radio blur so this is an image that's ai generated i mean it's fitting to design a ai takeover design using ai right so i did get this image from um i think it was mid journey and as you can see i applied a radio blur to it um, and this is simply to give like a interesting look to the edges if you zoom in on the edges and we were to toggle this off you'll see that they kind of just look boxy by adding that radio blur we're really able to get an interesting um, edge effect and it's a nice roll off too. So when we apply those half tones later with Style Bender uh, version one, it basically would just give you a seamless roll off. So that's kind of the, the reason for that. Um, but let's toggle the other layer on. And this one is also um, to bring back some of the detail because obviously with the other layer, I lost a lot of detail. I wanted to bring that back. And that's kind of what I did right here. And this is a pretty sharp image, but I'm not too concerned about it being perfectly sharp simply because we are going to add that style effect, stylistic effect at the end, which sharpens all those pixels really nicely. So I always find that it's okay to have a little bit softer of images when you're working with your assets. But um, there we go. So that's the background. It's pretty chaotic, um, if, I, if you ask me, which is why I told you guys it's going to be a chaotic layer breakdown. <laughs> kind of cheesy, but anyway... Um, you know, the blending I could have done a little better, I'm not gonna lie, but it's not bad. Um, now let's go ahead and toggle on the trademark. And this is just my logo, and it says Concept Concept by Charlie Pangas. And I what I did is I stacked them with some Gaussian blurs, Gaussian, Gaussian, however you say that. Um, and that's to give it like a nice glow. And honestly, I went a little too mild for this. I could have went like one more, as you can see, and that would have been a little better. We could have done something like this. Actually, I'm going to do it now. There we go. I just corrected my own problem. So let's go to move on to the next layer, which is 2024. It's all the way at the top. And this one honestly has like a lot of the same story. It's just like some blur effects. And, you know, what I ended up doing was I ended up cutting the um, the four and I, I ended up shifting it. So I essentially had two different layers. I had one four. I cut it and I shifted it up and I added another one at the bottom and that became the new four. So really, it's not that complicated. A lot of layer masking and all that good stuff. And then with the colors added to it um, to give it that orange feel at the bottom, or I should say highlight, because if you look at the ship here, it's radiating this orangish red, red tones, right? And that's going to illuminate whatever is around it. So what I ended up doing is just adding us, I added a subtle hint of that orange color at the bottom of the text. So it looks like it sort of blends in with the um, environment a little bit better. I do see an opportunity here on the left side where this like radial is and you can kind of see it almost looks like a light ray i could have done something with that but it's okay um another thing is this antenna whatever you freaking call that i could have done something with that too had it overlapping not a big deal but you know there's opportunities here to work with now let's go ahead and move on 
to the robot. So this is the first robot layer. And um, this one, I believe, was simply to add uh, an overlay or a stroke. I think it was a stroke, actually. And then let's toggle this one on. Yeah, so that was just the stroke layer. Now, if I toggle this off, you'll see that the stroke kind of goes away, right? And that's, you know, pretty important to have because it allows the, the AI robot, which is our main subject, it kind of helps it pop out of the background. So that stroke is really important. And now that I look at it, the stroke is a little light. So it's actually best to duplicate this layer. And as you can see, it darkens it up maybe even one more time for good measure. And um, it's best to do this now because when you get into the post processing or like the, the main processing effects, um, you really want to have the cleanest image as possible, like the most final, final that you can get right before you start adding all the grunge and texture, whatever you want to call it. Um, what I'm going to do is duplicate it three times. I'm going to merge them together and then we can actually uh, convert this to a smart object. And this will allow me to add like things like blur without it being like a final change in case I want to go back and change it later on. So I'm just going to add a very slight blur to this. Nothing crazy. That looks pretty good to me. So there you go. That's our stroke pretty much done. These next layers add a little bit more detail in the eye to give it sort of a reflection. Nothing crazy there. Um, I basically duplicated the image and added it in the eye and just masked around it. Um, it was really simple. And then um, what is this next layer? Let's check this out. So this next layer looks like it's just a black fill. The old retro computer that I have sitting in front of the subject, it needed some shadows. So you'll see when I toggle it on, um, it, it will all come together. So I added like different layering effects. So there's like a softer and then it goes into a darker black. So it's, it's basically black fading. I could have done that probably a different way. I don't know why I did it that way, but you know, that's kind of what happens. And then um, moving on, this next layer is a hue and saturation layer to add highlights around the subject. And what I did is if you look at my settings, you'll see that I changed the lightness, the saturation, and I clicked colorize, which is something that um, a lot of like photo, manipula uh, photo manipulation artists do. So um, that's always like a really good thing to do. And um, I think there's a guy named Benji Productions, or I forgot his name now, something Productions, and he uses the same exact technique, which is really nice. And I, that's kind of where I picked it up from. So I try to throw a lot of photo manipulation techniques into my work. But yeah, you can see those shadows behind it kind of peeking through. Again, I could have done a little better there, but um, and then, you know, with the hue and saturation layer as well on the computer, because we still need to capture all those, uh, you know, those lights. Um, it's like a catch light, right? Because when you're having a color radiating, like right now on my right side of my desk here, I have a lamp and it's more of a yellow tint and you could probably see the cast right here. See, see that little spot right there. And that's kind of how it works. So you're going to have to show where those highlights are being casted on. And um, if you don't, it just doesn't look realistic. These next layers basically just add some sparks in front of the subject, adds a nice foreground element, which I really love to do. I always look at my designs in three different layers. You have the background, the main subject, and then you have the foreground elements too. So basically in the middle is whatever's really in focus, right? The, the, the focal point of the entire design, whatever's in the foreground just adds some like, almost like a cherry on top, you know, kind of thing. Um, and those blend modes are just changed to screen. I did mask out some of the edges to keep it clean. And then the next layer is the bottom text where, you know, kind of the main quote, if you will, um, is, is present. So it says the year artificial intelligence took over. I really wanted that to be there. And then I just did the same thing. I layered it to create that glow. And again, now that I look at it, I probably could have added a little bit more glow. I kind of went a little soft there. It's okay though. And then um, that's pretty much it for those layers. Now, the main layers are actually up here where you see highlight bloom and that really sells this old vintage kind of vibe, right? Um, it, it gives you like more of a filmic look too, which is kind of nice. So um, if you toggle it off, you can see there's a big drastic difference there. And I'll quickly run you through how I did that. So let's hide this layer. I'm gonna press Shift Command Option E and that's going to duplicate it with the background. And what I did is I went to uh, select color range and the main thing up here is actually choosing, instead of sample colors, we wanna select highlights, and that will give us that nice bloom um, effect once we're done. So you really wanna change the fuzziness until you get all the highlights. And you, you kinda of wanna experiment with this. Sometimes you might mess up, so it's okay, you can go back. I just want just enough for the highlights. So I'm gonna press okay. And there you go, now we're selecting the highlights, and we could just do uh, Shift Command C to copy, Shift Command V to paste, and now you have a highlight layer we can hide this bottom layer now if you want to. And it doesn't look like really anything happened, of course, but that's because we haven't done anything yet. So let's go ahead and first change the blend mode 
to, uh, I think it's actually screen. Let's change it to screen. Let me just make sure because I believe I did use screen. Yes, I did. Now what we want to do is go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and that's going to give you that bloom effect. As soon as you add that blur, you're going to see it come to life. And you really want to go less is more kind of thing on this because if you go too crazy, you can start to see the image uh, fall apart pretty quickly. So I, my word of advice to you guys is to stack the effect and gradually build it up and don't go too crazy with the bloom effect. But yeah, that's pretty much it for that. And you can see it's uh, really easy. The only other tip I can give you guys is you can always, before you add the Gaussian blur, maybe make this a smart object. That way when you add the blur, it's, uh, you know, you're able to change it later on. So I can do like, you know, I can make it a smart object, go to blur, Gaussian blur, and now since it's a smart object, it kind of remembers what I just did and I can toggle it on and off, make changes as necessary as needed. Now let's go on to the color adjustment layers. Now the color adjustment's pretty simple, right? So like the way I look at it is I start from the bottom and I use something called a, uh, a color lookup. So if you wanna add a color lookup, you just go to the adjustment layers and go to the bottom and you're gonna see color lookup right there. And if you uh, go to the 3D LUT file, you can basically choose from all these LUTs that are preloaded. You can even add your own LUTs, which is really cool. Um, I definitely recommend you try that. The LUT that I chose was the Fuji Eterna 250D. It's a really nice one. It adds kind of like these warm tones. What I did is I ended up duplicating this layer, creating a copy, and then I added another LUT. And this was all experimentation, right? So I just like tried all these different LUT combos and this is what I landed on. Um, I love these ones uh, together. You could try it out yourself on your design. If you don't like it, pick another one. Um, and then to adjust the colors a little bit, it was kind of coming on warm, as you can see. I added a color balance adjustment um, in order to just kind of fix the colors and shift them more towards like the blues and the reds. We don't need any layer masks here, so I can actually delete these. That's the final design right there. And what I did is I ended up selecting everything. So I pressed Command A, Shift Command C to copy merged. And then I just pasted it into my template, as you can see right here. Um, I think the only other thing that I did is I added a color halftone to it. I'll show you how to do it. So if I paste that artwork, cause I just copied it, I basically just go up to filter. And then I think we go to pixelate color halftone. And I wanna add a four radius, max radius halftone. I don't need to adjust any of the channels. And it's not going to look perfect because again, I did add some different adjustments to make it look like this. So you have to factor that in. Um, if you look at the one before, this is a lot more final. So I did clearly do a lot more to it. Um, it looks like I pushed and pulled the colors quite a bit actually. And I might even added a little blur. So if I go blur, box blur, let's do like one pixel and we can adjust the colors from here. There we go, that looks a little bit more like it. Yeah, it's spot on. So that's as simple as it is guys. Um, your tones in your image are gonna make the world of difference when you're making adjustments like this. So just make sure that you're playing with the, the midtones, the shadows, the highlights and all that good stuff in no particular order, but just make sure you're adding a little bit of that contrast back in when you're using Style Bender. It's gonna give you really nice results every time. And as you can see, when you zoom in, you get so much detail, it's actually crazy. Um, yeah, that's that's it for this. I hope you guys enjoyed this chaotic layer breakdown video. And um, don't forget that I offer a membership on my website now. So if you guys wanna take my course and you wanna download all my products completely included with the membership, it's only $30 a month. And I'm actually thinking about, depending on your input, lowering the price to like 20, 25 bucks. You guys let me know what works for you. Um, the goal of this membership is to make all of my assets and my courses easily accessible to everybody. It's an optional membership. You do not have to get it. You could just buy my course, you could just buy my products, but I figured the membership will help some people out that don't have all that extra cash laying around up front. The membership allows you to get everything without spending all that money up front to get all my products. So hopefully that makes sense. And um, some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. I realize that. But I think it's um, it's a good thing for everybody to have options. So uh, that was AI Takeover. My name is Charlie Pangus. If you guys enjoyed the video, smash that like button. And also don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment so I can see your face. All right. I will see you guys in the very next video. Peace. <laughs>